Near-surface pollution is one of the most challenging problems for Earth observations from space. Pollution largely comes from energy use, fossil fuel combustion. But fossil fuel combustion can come from transportation, it can come from energy generation. Uh, those are the two largest ones. Uh, it comes from aircraft, cars, trucks, ships offshore. Um, but one of the bigger problems is that that pollution also mixed with natural emissions. So not all pollution has a purely uh, human or anthropogenic origin. So ultimately we're trying to diagnose that near surface condition so that satellites can be used effectively in the future uh, to help us understand at the ground what's going on. We've been flying aircraft for over 30 years now trying to understand processes in the atmosphere. And as satellites have come online that can begin to probe and understand what's going on lower and lower in the atmosphere, not just the stratosphere, but down near the surface, we had a chance to understand a little better what's going on down near the surface. And so proposing a five-year campaign that would use aircraft in combination with remote sensors uh, to do that was, was where Discovery AQ came from. It all begins with how a satellite observes the atmosphere. And first of all, the satellite observes the atmosphere as a full column. It looks down through the atmosphere at the total amount of a substance that exists from the top of the atmosphere all the way to the surface. But ultimately, it's that amount at the bottom that an air quality regulator wants to understand at the location where people live and breathe. And we do that with observations from all three perspectives that are relevant to air quality. You see NASA's A-Train, and this is a low Earth orbiting set of satellites that pass over at 1.30 in the afternoon. So you only get one look a day from a satellite train like, like the A-Train. And we're going to use planes to try to understand how that plays out throughout the day. And the first one is remote sensing from NASA's UC-12 King Air aircraft. It behaves as a satellite would, but it orbits over the metropolitan area of interest throughout the day. Beneath that, we have the NASA P-3, and you see these, these spiral patterns that uh, at our several locations underneath UC-12. And what we do here is we pick six locations in a metropolitan area. Uh, these tend to be the areas where trying to understand air quality are most important. So how do we understand the last thousand feet where a lot of things can happen? We do that with tethered balloons so that you can let that balloon go up and down throughout the day trying to measure that part of the atmosphere that the plane can't reach. So some of the balloons we let go is with a weather balloon to measure ozone and, and water vapor and temperature. It's important that our observation scheme be anchored to those ground points because Getting a satellite to agree with that ground point is the first step in getting them to trust a satellite to tell them what's happening not just at that point, but what's happening in between the points. And so you can extend the view of air quality uh, beyond the few sparse data points that a regulator has on the ground right now. The column observation represents what a satellite would see. The vertically resolved observation is that special thing, that component that Discover AQ brings to the equation so that we can understand what's happening between the surface and the column amount, and we do that with aircraft. So ultimately, we expect this data set to be statistically viable in terms of understanding how to address the challenge of trying to see air quality from space.